Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome Master Instructor, Master Instructor Anders Motz. Hello. Ooh. And, He's Avid certified. And the yeah. Master of all Master Instructors, Andy Hageman. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And myself, Dave. Just Dave. <laughs> to take you deep into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community get the best out of our chosen door. In this week's episode, we're going to be tackling an, an email. Well, it was more more of an essay um, from one of our <laughs> our treasured subscribers, Barry, who uh, who was watching a previous video where we were where we were discussing dither uh, during exporting. Right, not yeah. bouncing, but exporting, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, he had some further questions on it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but he, his main question is: How does Pro Tools handle audio leaving the Pro Tools mix engine, say back to hardware interfaces, or printing to a new track internally? Uh, from my experiments, it truncates. Correct? Um, am I aware of the session settings and their effect on this? I'm assuming that this is set at 24 bit as the audio was recorded at. Also, in watching the video on Dither, I I believe it was stated that exporting from the clips list only dithers when going from 16 bit. I did a test on this and in my test it dithers when going from 32 to 24 as well. Uh, if you were on 24, 32 to 24, that is where my long winded email comes into play. I need to take a breath. <laughs> we, we have another one of his questions that we're going to tackle in next week's show. Um, but this is basically comes down to when is Pro Tools going to automatically apply dither um, when um, uh, reducing bit depth, right? So, so he starts out by saying, um, you know, how does, how does Pro Tools handle dither when playing out to external hardware? Mm. The answer is it doesn't. It doesn't handle dither. You can handle dither if you want to. I mean, you want to, if you want to... Uh, add dither to the master fader for whatever reason um, on playback to to an external device. You could certainly do that. Um, I don't. I can't think offhand of any reason why you would need to. But you know, let's say you're you're playing at 24 bit to something digital that's only recording at 16 bit. Ah, uh, that mm -hmm. wouldn't do the trick, really. Well, analog recording obviously you wouldn't, right? But if you were recording digitally. Worth By the way, preparation on these shows is amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, but if, it's I, I, you're right. There is no, if, there is, if, you would If you're outputting 24-bit digital yeah. and recording to an external digital recorder that's recording at 16-bit, yeah. then you could put a 16-bit dither on the master fader. But Pro Tools wouldn't do that for you in that scenario because you're and just you would not that do that. The, the, that, the, that, the, that the bit depth reduction would be would be in the device itself or at the output stage of your interface. You mean that like that, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. So so mm -hmm. Pro Tools is not going to dither by itself. No, you would have no. to put it on there, mm -hmm. um, and that's the only situation I can think of that you would need to do that when recording to an external device. When you're recording analog, obviously mm -hmm. you don't need to. Um, Dave, you came up with a good one because the second one was when you're recording internally, mm -hmm. and it was brilliant. Oh, well, brilliant! I say. Well, well, well. Thank you. Um, I think you're talking bollocks, but thank you, Andy, for saying so. Anyway, uh, so the the <laughs> scenario was, uh, I think you someone somebody posed the question: um, Would dither be applied when we were recording intern uh, printing into the session, right? Um, and we're going to deal with, with the printing versus bouncing later on. But what we can do, typically, if you, if you were ignoring the setting that, uh, that was being highlighted at the moment, um, Pro Tools would just bounce into the session in your native session settings. But mm -hmm. because we can change the bit depth, uh, we can host multiple bit depths on the timeline. We can't, ho we can't host multiple sample rates on the timeline, but we can host multiple bit depths. So it is possible to bounce into back into your session and print the track into the session in a different bit depth. Um, mm -hmm. But Pro Tools wouldn't apply that automatically. Um, it wouldn't apply dither. It wouldn't apply right? the dither would apply automatically. Dither. You'd have to stick your dither plug-in if you wanted to dither. Um, mm -hmm. You'd have to stick your dither plug-in onto the, uh, an insert prior to the output going to your print track. Right, and, it, and not 
not put the dither on the recording track because that's diffusing the bomb after it's gone off. Mm -hmm. yep. so it's wrong place in the signal path. <clears throat> yep. mm -hmm. It's only affecting the output at that point uh, from the track. That's it's right. not going yeah. to the file. Mm. Yeah, that's I thought a, that was genius. That's genius, a genius way you. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about exporting clips from the clips list? Because he, he keeps mentioning this. Um, so this was the crux of the episode, and this is where his question came from. Because I believe he's mentioned that during the episode, we did we suggest that it would only apply dither if we were truncating to sixteen bit. If we did, and I don't doubt that we did, we were speaking <laughs> irresponsibly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and by we, I mean probably me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just might have been thinking about a specific scenario and sure. just didn't yeah. el elaborate as much as we normally do. So what we're talking so, about is the ability to export clips as a file from the clips list. And while doing that, uh, Protoss will get us this export options dialog where we can set a lower bit depth than our session is. Or actually, we can go higher as well. Uh, so when does Pro Tools add dither when going between a bit depths, Andy? Well, as, as you can see in this table from the Pro Tools reference guide, um, uh, Pro Tools will use the Avid dither plugin um, and will use noise shaping only when uh, you're going from a higher bit depth to a lower bit depth. So if we said only when you're going to 16, that was, that was I think, a, a little bit overly casual if we were to say that. Mm. So if you go to 32 bit, from 32 bit to 24 bit, you can see here that, that um, dither and noise shaping are applied. And this is automatic. You don't have any control over that. You don't mm. really need any control over it. It's, it's, you know, it's something that, that most, most people are happy to be done automatically. So going that, that's assuming they know it happens because yeah, so this, 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 it's invisible. It doesn't give you any uh, any indication no. that it's happening. But so there's no, there's no check boxes or anything. Deduction will add dither using yeah. the Avid dither plugin. and and noise shaping. But and I can I yeah. can see the logic though because if it if you do uh, truncate uh, sorry I use the word truncate wrong um, uh, reduce the bit depth and it results in quantization noise because the the dither is all about um, smoothing off rounding errors right. No, you're you're no, on you're right. The right track. Oh, yeah. that's okay. I yeah. was expecting you to to, good. to laugh at me. Um, if um, if it didn't do that and it resulted in a uh, an audio an audible degradation, audible noise, mm -hmm. we'd be very angry at Avid right now, wouldn't we? So I think per automatically providing that uh, uh, that dithering to r to round off those errors is a, it's a nice smart move. Yeah, makes total sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, are there any difference in this um, if you're doing a bounce to disk operation and you are selecting a different bit depth than your uh, than the session bit depth itself? So if I well, would... That, that's where you, you, know, you have to choose to manually add, right? Yeah. Mm. So, exactly. so again, the only, the only time when Pro Tools takes care of that for you is when your you know your your uh, exporting from the clips list mm. you know export files from the clip list anytime that you reduce your bit depth um pro tools is just going to go ahead and take the handle and drive right he goes yeah. um uh, but, there's one but more if you're location doing as well other... and that is mm -hmm. when you're using the file uh save yeah, copy right. in mm -hmm. uh and you're using this to reduce your bit depth as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the same table as we just spoke about will apply. So anytime you go from a higher bit depth to a lower, Protoss will automatically add uh, dither and noise shaping. But recording bouncing to disk, recording internally to mm -hmm. a track, or recording externally, if, if, that's, if there's any scenario that you would need it, um, whenever you are reducing your bit depth at that point, it's incumbent upon you to mm -hmm. add the dither plugin if that's the way you're gonna go. So I think we could probably boil it down further to if your bounce is bus based, you can apply your own dither. But if it's going directly to disk as in exporting um, or where you don't get any options to add any plugins, it's added automatically. Well, I'd say that bounce mix is not bus based. Bounce, uh, for using the bounce dialog. Yeah, although it is, you're, choo it is you're, you're choosing an output. Oh, no, you're right. You're mm. right. Um, now they think about it. yeah no I think you're right that's a that's a I'll, I'll I stand corrected 
and I, and I will uh, I'll take the shame of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're but right. It, 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 yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. Okay, I'm I'm just going to sit down now and just relax because I think I've had two two moments of genius today is probably more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to peak too early. I've got other stuff to Genius? do today. <laughs> yeah. Dave, you're way too humble. <laughs> um, I, I think we've gone as far as we can with that, right? Yeah. So it's it, it was a really interesting question. Really had us thinking. Yeah. Uh, it's a good one, yeah. Yeah, when, when does Pro Tools apply dither and when do we need to apply it ourselves? And it's mm-hmm. it's logical, I think, you know, and, when you're doing and that. And of course... Sorry, go on. Go Andy. ahead. And of course, there is one question that we haven't answered, mm-hmm. which is what type of noise shaping does the Avid Dither plugin use? Mm-hmm. And the, the answer, answer is, is yes. we can't find an answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> we we could always go to we, you've got a direct line. You've got a bat phone to the devs, right, Andy? I do. I do, mm. I do have a bat phone to the devs, but again, you you don't you, you want to kind of keep that line from being abused. Right, so let's just say that that noise shaping is turned on, yes. and just let's leave it at that. <laughs> okay, but, but we can't find. I, we we did all kinds of searching, could not find out what. It's not power dither. It's the Avid dither plugin, and with the Avid dither plugin, noise shaping is on or off. What type of noise shaping? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to suggest that it's probably middle for diddle. Because if it's the lower noise shaping, it's there's there's not a lot there, so it's not going to be doing a lot of work. If it's the higher noise shaping, it's going to be doing a, adding a lot of extra potential noise in. Um, so I'm I'm going to say it's middle. It's not a lot. It's it's just enough. I, <laughs> I I'm going to go with the that is the third episode of genius from from Dave in 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 this show. We'll call it genius. Middle. Mm, just gonna, Let's just compromise. I'm just Do gonna, we know? No. I think. Do we care? <laughs> I think I'm just going to close the episode, then go back to bed. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> nothing else is going to go right today. Um, so uh, if you've got uh, a, a little bit of info uh, out of this episode, give us a thumbs up on the video. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can hit the bell uh, to be notified when we uh, release our new videos every week. If you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can uh, see what we're up to over there. You can subscribe over there there as well and Andy will write to you every so often to let us know what or let you know what we're up to um, if you fancy joining our inner circle and supporting Pro Tools answers uh, you can do so over there you can find out what the, the, the two tiers um, available to you are and what the benefits of those entail and um, we will see you in the next episode thank you very much to Master Andy you betcha and Master Anders thank you I'm Dave this is Pro Tools Answers and we're out <laughs> <laughs>